Okay, so here is my room from the hallway. My room measures approximately 11 by 15 feet. So you know, have an idea of what I'm working with. And sorry, I'm on a selfie stick with the camera. So if it's a little shaky, I do apologize. But you come in the room and my original plan for this craft room was to have three different areas. So over here would be my stamping area. This side over here is my sewing, embroidering, and this side right here is my desk. So that is the reason why I have three of the same desk, which these are the Alex drawers. I don't remember the name of the tabletop, but I will have, I'll look everything up and list everything uh, below. So I, I straightened up, and if you hear squeaking, that's this, the floor. <laughs> I straightened up a little bit, but I wanted it to be a true representation of what my craft room looks like. I didn't want to show you a really clean craft room because it is never clean um, because I have so much. So that's the whole point of updating. So I'm going to start you off to the right and then we're going to kind of just loop around. So you come in. Here's the door. Behind the door I have this gr huge green cutting mat that my husband bought me. I've used it a couple times, but when I use it, I have to use it on the floor. So it's horrible because it's such a great mat to lay out fabric and I never have room for it. So it hangs on the wall. This is a pegboard my husband put together. It has legs when I go to craft shows, but um, for now it's just leaning up against the wall. The legs are off. We have one of these carts. There's my recycle box, left that in because I always have a box on the floor. So this is mostly my Stampin' Up! cart. And I have it labeled neutrals, subtles, etc. But in here, I just use a file folder with what paper it is. And then in here is my file folder. Now for scraps, I do this. Let me find something. So a baggie. So I have a baggie of scraps and I have what colors are in here. And these are current Stampin' Up! colors. I hate the system. And this cart is on the opposite end of, opposite end of the room from my uh, stamping area. So that is never ideal. These carts are good, but when they get too heavy, they come off track. So for paper, it's okay, but it can't get too heavy. So moving on, here's my brother Scan and Cut where I leave that. Here's so I have my sewing machine over here, my embroidery machine right here, and then another one of these tables with the Alex drawers. Um, up here I have a shelf with just some knickknack stuff. In the chair is a ton of vinyl. <laughs> over here I have my cart, one of my carts with my Crafty Gemini, or Crafty Gemini. Where did that even come from? My Gemini Junior. Um, and I've used it a handful of times. I love it. But getting up to use it, finding a plug, I usually use that plug. It's just not convenient for me. And underneath, I keep some vinyl. It's more my sewing cart. This cart I purchased from Michaels. And I recently bought this top. This top comes off. And it's been so handy. I love it. So I love that I can stick something on top of this surface. And over here I have all my thread. And then I have this shelf with my cards. On the side here I have a huge trimmer cutter, all my stabilizer, a little ironing board I made, my scan and cut mat, another cutting mat, and then these containers from scrapbook.com. These containers are great for storing embellishments. So I label them or ephemera. So the Tim Holtz Botanical, I think these are like ideally or originally for photos. So it holds the ephemera pieces. I really, really love this because it gives it some organization. And um, they had a deal two for one at one point and I went ahead and picked up two. So here's So Punny from Doodlebug. I can keep all the pieces together. I don't have to keep the original packaging. It's all in here and it works out perfect. So for lighting, I have these stand-up lights. I think I got them at Walmart. I had those in my classroom. I have another one on the other end. Here I have this cart, this Michael's cart. This box is my D-Stash. Ton of D-Stash stuff coming in January, so stay tuned for that. But this cart is awesome. Michael's. 
However, it's extremely expensive. I got it when it was they were having a big sale. Um, I had it in my classroom last year, and it's really handy. Um, but since I'm not teaching this year, I went ahead and brought it home. So on top, I have my cam snaps that I use to make my hand sanitizer holders and keychains. And then I just have some supplies in here, headphones. When I'm embroidering or sewing, I usually put headphones on. and listen. So in these drawers, and this is not paper related, but it'll hold 12 by 12 paper. So here's my drawer. Here are my felties I make. And when I have an order, I come and grab from here. But what I love about these is you can just pull them right out. And you can take them wherever you want. Um, and they're real easy to get back in. Even with one hand. <laughs> so I love these. Here's all my vinyl. More vinyl, more vinyl. And then the bottom is felt. But if you want to splurge and probably pay overpriced because at full price this is ridiculous get one of these they have the rainbow i got the rainbow because it was in my classroom otherwise i would get the clear because the clear it's uniform you don't have to worry about it clashing with the theme or color scheme you're doing moving along here's my cat area i've tried to entice them to hang out with me they really don't but that's okay <laughs> so moving on is this bookcase from walmart it is the cheapest bookcase out there. Um, I don't even want to move it because it'll probably fall apart. But it is going away. It won't be staying in this room. So on top, I have my Spectrum Noir markers. My husband made this perfect but extremely heavy uh, marker storage for it. And then, and then just some little stuff on top just to decorate it, whatever. I'm really bad with knick-knacky stuff. So I've come a long way <laughs> in getting rid of it. So in my dresser I keep fabric and I wanted you guys to let me know when I do my D stash in January which when you see this it'll be January right now it's December when I'm filming but would you be interested or who would be interested in a fabric D stash as well because I have a ton of fabric that I would like to purge so let me know if you would be interested in that. If you're not interested, don't say anything, but if you are, let me know. So I keep fabric in here. I have even more fabric in here. And then, what? Are, oh, more fabric. And then down here, it's paper stuff. So on the floor, these two bins hold my dies and they're on the floor. And I hate that they're on the floor, but I have no other place for them. So they stay here. When I have to get in this drawer, it's a real pain because I have to move these. Now it's full of dies, so it's heavy. So I just move them out of the way. And under here, this last drawer, I have, uh oh, okay. I have some, my stamping platform, I have my trimmer, a couple trimmers, and then just a storage box of stuff I used to make. And then under here somewhere is my sequin storage. So this is a horrible setup. I hate it, having to dig through it, like pulling out the drawer, the other one came out. It's just not, not a good setup. And then I have to put my dies back over there so in this little area I have my paper towels and then I have some cardstock and then my scoreboard sorry if the lighting is real bad and then here is another trimmer now here's the bookshelf and we're or the um, dresser we're gonna keep moving to the left here is another one of these carts I had this one in my classroom as well so the top holds my ATG then I have some cutting plates this thing is actually the um, the storage unit, for lack of a better term, that attaches to the Big Shot. And my Big Shot is on the floor, so I just have this up here. Ideally, I would like it next to my Big Shot because it has some great compartments. You can put tape here. I have my brush. Um, it's just really useful. More cutting plates, and I have some fun fo or scotch foam tape back here. And then just some papers, a cutting mat, some backdrops, and then my paper pads that I sometimes use. So I have another one of these lights and I have one shooting down for when I film. I'll get to this in a second. So I have on the desk some things I'm working on, um, but here's where I keep my Mar uh, Copics. This is the set I have and I keep it next to me. 
Here are some inks. And this is Stampin' Up! ink holder. No longer sell it. It's retired, but I still use it because I have the Stampin' Up! old ink pads. And it fits the little, you know, the Lawn Fawn Simon Says Stamp ink pads just fine. What I love about this cart, or this caddy, is the top you can hold all your ink refills. So I have my Stampin' Up! ink refills, and then I just purchased the Distress, some of them, ink refills. So it's great. I have my Prismacolor pencil sharpener. It's just perfect. All right, so this first drawer, I have my cutting, my scissors, all my stamping blocks, um, a couple punches. Now another issue with this setup, the drawer does open a little bit more, but it hits the lovely dresser. And this overflows, and I, I just cannot wait to have a better setup. Way in here are some markers and some embossed pens, my snow marker, um, a punch, another stamping block that found its way back there. So this drawer is just a big old mess. The next drawer is some embellishments. I keep my gemstones, rhinestones, some embellishments. Oh, I didn't go through this cart. I'll go through that in a second. And then my sand erasers, just trying to keep it organized somewhat. Then here I have, and again, it gets stuck. Well, now the scoreboard's stopping it, but the dresser does stop it. So baby wipes, sprays, ink blending tools, odds and ends, uh, press and seal, and then way back there, some wet adhesive, some glue. This drawer has these containers of ink. Um, I have quite a bit of them. And so this is really all it has. Way back there is my flocking, which I haven't used, and my perfect pearls. And then I have some more perfect pearls, some alcohol blending sponges. This last drawer holds my memento ink some watercolor panels, my blending brushes, and some wood stamps. I rarely go in this drawer except for my blending brushes, but I love my Memento Dewdrop inks. Okay, for the cart here that I forgot, we'll start with the top. The top has my disgusting Lawn Fawn chamois. I actually do have a replacement. I need to switch that out. Uh, my Misty, my little foam pad, some acetate. This is just kind of all thrown in there. Um, a sponge to clean. I wanted this to be an actual representation of what I work with. I didn't want to straighten it up and, and show you. Now when you see my after, it's going to be right after, so it's going to be in pristine condition, but I think you'll notice um, some improvements. So here's some cutting plates for my little um, sidekick. The next drawer is some ink. I have some Distress inks and my Catherine Puller, the few I have. Some doilies stay in here. I hate this setup. I hate when I'm looking for a specific distress ink and I'm having to dig. Sometimes they fall to the side. Sometimes the lid pops off. It's just not ideal. Here's some more distress inks, distress oxide inks. This is scrap paper of black, white, and vanilla. I hate keeping scrap paper. I'll do it for the black and white, but for the colored cardstock, um, I usually go and I'll purge most of this. It's just, I never use it because I use black and white so much. So this is just colored, plain colored cardstock. This is some specialty paper. I actually did go through this and organize it. So this is my specialty paper. It either has the embossed or it is um, has a sheen to it. And then I'm gonna drop it. On the other side is my mirror cardstock. So down here is some more glitter cardstock. I have fun foam scraps. This right here is another cutting board, foam board, and these are kind of backdrops for photos. Um, I attach them to foam board just to make them a little bit more sturdy. This is some stencils. This has stencils and punches. This is my embossing folders drawer and then here is just kind of I know it's really dark hopefully when I edit this you'll still be able to see but here I have just some tools some sponges some spectrum noir clear markers extra ones some sponge daubers so we stopped here at the caddy and the going on this is my work area I do get a lot of questions how do you what's your camera setup my camera setup is nothing special so, so I have this shelf right here above my desk, and there's a cutout back here that my husband cut out. This, this thing is a mic boom. 
it moves, you know, it's, it's supposed to move left, right. Think about DJs in the studio. This is what their mic is going to be attached to. And this is a selfie stick I zip tied to it. And then I put my camera in here and I'm able to bring it down, bring it up. It's really handy. However, sometimes I have issues. It's quite wobbly. So um, if you've been watching me forever, long ago, my videos used to be quite shaky. This has improved that a lot. I've come a long way, but at times, like if I touch my camera, the whole thing will shake. So it's okay, but it could be better. <laughs> So back to my desk, I usually have my iPad here where I watch something. I'm always watching something when I'm making something. Um, this is some pre-cut cardstock. These little containers just hold some extra Copics, my water brush pens, scissors. Um, here's my little sidekick. By the way, these two lights right here, they're both odd lights, awesome lights. If you're looking for lighting to film, they're the best. I do have this and I do bring this one down to shine extra light. So moving on, here is another stamp caddy. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these caddies whenever I get my new setup, so we'll see. Um, they may be something I'm de-stashing, which makes me sad, but if I don't need them, they need to go. So more stamp, more inks. Mostly all this is Stampin' Up! All this is current Stampin' Up! ink. And then I have the matching refills to go with the inks in this caddy. Over here is my nail polish holder where I have my alcohol inks, stickles, um, the powders kind of like brush -o. Then I have my Nouveau drops and somewhat of a color coordinated order. <laughs> this little bucket is my recycle bucket that needs to be emptied, but I love having it because I don't like throwing things away that can be recycled. So this is very easy while I work, I throw stuff in there. I usually have a trash can next to me down here. I took that out because the trash can's full and that's just gross. You don't need to see that. This stuff is just stuff. I usually put right here what I need to work on or what I'm currently working on. So this space is always full of something which takes away from my workspace. These I just bought, these little flappy things, they were on clearance at Michael's and I posted about them be because I was so excited they were on clearance because they're ridiculously expensive. And they work great. I had a couple people comment on my Facebook that they don't work for them. But for me, they work perfect. I've had this sitting here for several days with a thing of paint to test it out. And this desk is real slick. So, um, you know, the surface you're sticking on may be a factor. I don't know. But for me, they've worked really well. Okay, I'm kind of in a weird spot. I'm under my desk. I just wanted to show you what I keep under here. Um, over here, I have a little command hook. And that's where my embossing tool hangs. I have my Bristol Smooth and my Canson XL watercolor paper that I use the most underneath the desk, which is not ideal. I have a little dust buster. And then I have this picture frame, which I took out so I could show you. It's actually this. And I actually had these hanging on the wall. What I did was I bought a picture frame and I used the back side. So on this side, it's glass. I put a magnet sheet there and then I used my, I put my most used magnets or uh, dies on this magnet sheet. I say most used, but I rarely use these. It's really those right there. I hate this. <laughs> if you hang it on the wall, it's great, but it's under my desk. I kick it all the time. What happens when I kick it? All the dies fall off. So that's a horrible way of doing that. Okay, moving on, here is the left side of my workspace. So we're gonna go through these drawers. This is my ridiculous amount of washi tape and I have de-stashed a lot of washi tape yet it still never goes away. Um, the way I organize them is these little things they're sitting in are actually aluminum foil containers. When we're done with the foil, I take the container, I rip off the lid, I put some washi tape on the sides because you know you have that one side where it's to rip the foil. And the 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 majority of washi table washi tape fits perfectly. So I have some twine and then I have just a couple things of ribbon. I have some more twine underneath here. But I'm telling you, if you need a thing for your washi tape and you don't want to spend the money to buy a container, 
the foil thing works great. Next is my messy embossing drawer. I have my white, my clear, and my black, and then my embossing buddy. And then I have all my embossing powder. And again, I have de-stashed a ton of embossing powder, and this is pretty much what I have left over. This drawer holds, it's a big old mess, but I have my post-it tape. I have my stamp and dimensionals. I have double-sided tape. I have some masking tape, some more double-sided tape, painter's tape, tape cartridges. This drawer is my ribbon right here. Some scraps. Again, I de-stashed a ton of ribbon. Um, some more twine, This, aside from this one. This is some retired Stampin' Up! twine. I have back here some alcohol paper, um, fun foam, and then here I have some watercolor paper and fun foam. See how it's all kind of hodgepodgey? Here is where I keep my Big Shot right in the floor, where I kick it, trip over it, you can imagine. And down here are some stickers, embellishments, stuff that I get at Hobby Lobby or Michaels that I rarely use because not everyone has access to it. But um, that's where I keep all that. And again, I have de-stashed a lot in that drawer as well. Here is my printer. And then I have my filing cabinet with my personal papers in there. And then down here in this mess is stuff I wanted to work on for Christmas, but never got to. So that'll go somewhere. It would be packed away. Hopefully it doesn't retire before I can show you guys. And then... This has been cleaned up a little because I had all my Christmas stamps pulled, yet um, I had no way of getting to all of them due to time. So all right, so moving on from the floor here and going up, and then I have some bookshelf, knickknack stuff on the bookshelf, and then this is how I store my stamps. So these little containers are great for storing stamps. They're like a dollar at Walmart right before school starts. I'm assuming they're that price out all times, I don't know. These containers I got at Walmart, no, I got at Michael's because these were getting so full, I had to move on to something bigger. Um, so store by company, I just use a piece of cardstock, I type the label, I put it out there, uh, put it on the cardstock, and then I, I store my stamps this way. Um, I use the Simon Says Stamp sleeves again, I use a piece of cardstock as my backing and I type a label and then that's where the stamp set goes. So really easy to find. I also keep a binder with all the sets I have. I'm a little old school and I'll show you that in a moment when I get down there. This is just some extra space of stuff that I've been wanting to shoot with videos as far as the 10 cards one collection. Um, this is Stampin' Up! 12 by 12 paper. Here are my binders where I keep inventory. And I'll get to those in a second. On the floor here, my Stampin' Up! punches. Another thing is stamps that doesn't fit on the bookshelf. And this we just went through. So you can see how this is a big old mess. And I'll show you. I have another cart. And then this thing. And then I have my closet. So whenever I need to get into my closet, I have to move everything and get in there. And the closet, I'm going to show you, but it's going to be scary. Over here, I have some interfacing that's for sewing. So I went ahead and moved this cart. Um, what I keep on it is sewing, ironing, my uh, postage scale, a basket. I put my mail that I get for mail call in this cart. Whenever I get it, I just throw it in the cart and then it's next to my cat food. <laughs> so really quick, I wanted to show you the binder of how I keep inventory. Now, I do believe there is a program. I think it's called Evernote. I'm not sure. I don't bother with it. I know it's probably a better way of organizing your stamps, but this works for me. I like it because I just, I'm all about printing and having a hard copy. So I, this is, I have two binders and they all have tabs of by company. And I print, when I get a new stamp set, I type the name and I do the image um, by either stamping it or uh, getting it offline just to have. So if I need to, find out, okay, I'm going to do a lawn fawn stamp or I'm going to do a neat and tangled. I go to the neat and tangled tab and I can see what I have. Now, when I highlight it, that means I have done it in a video. It's not highlighted. I have yet to show it. Now, when I do my de-stash, I go through my binders, go through, see what I can get rid of, tear out the paper. And then I know those are the stamps I need to pull. This rack right here, if I can back up further enough, is actually a shoe rack. And the shoe rack is actually hanging upside down because it holds my stamps better upside down. 
Um, I think I got the shoe rack like at Kroger, which is a local grocery store. So I keep my Stampin' Up! stamps on this shoe rack and it works out perfectly. Um, I did realize I hung it upside down. I hung it right side up and the little netting in here would not go far down. It kind of stayed up a little. So my things weren't staying like they should. So then I fixed it to go upside down. This is a great way of storing your stamps if you have Stampin' Up! or anything else. Um, down here I have dies and paper and then if you need to roll something up I have it sits right in there. It's perfect. It's off the ground. It's in front of a door so it doesn't take up that much space. It doesn't take up any wall space. Um, so I'm really pleased with this setup. Um, I'm assuming it will stay this way. I don't know. This may actually go on the inside when all is said and done. It depends on what I can do with um, the new layout. So we're not going to go in the closet yet because <laughs> that is the worst part. So there's my bookshelf closet. We're going to move on. Here's my desk area. Um, again, I have the Alex drawers on each side, just like my sewing and my stamping table. Um, this just has your basic desk stuff, pens, papers, pencils, whatever. Um, and over here is another I'm Alex drawer. Um, it's the taller one. And again, this is more paper uh, supplies, stamping supplies. So I have like I have this cart from the beginning. We have that. Then I have this. And then I have some more over here in my stamping area. It's just all over the place. And it really is not working for me. So going through this, this holds Stampin' Up! stuff. So I have my tape refills, embossing folders, ribbon, current ribbon, current uh, embellishments, more tape refills. The Fast Fuse went out and I, I bought a whole bunch when it was on clearance. I've labeled retired. So these are my retired bins, uh, my retired drawer of Stampin' Up! products. Typically what I will do is um, sometimes people order from me and they earn a gift. I will pull new product. Some of it's open. I won't use the open product, but if they earned a gift, I may give them something that has been retired, but they may have missed out on a thing of ribbon, some um, embellishments, whatever. If it is open, I keep it for myself. But a lot of times I'll go on the clearance rack and stock up and then they can earn a free gift. Um, this is another, I just organized these actually. This is another retired drawer. It was, but I'm having, uh, putting my catalogs there for now. And that is empty. Like I said, I organized this because I'm purging. A drawer full of fabric. And then these are, yeah, just some like beauty products. Little makeup bags, hit and miss of stuff. And then, oh, that's Mary Kay. <laughs> it probably needs to be thrown away. It's several years old. So that is the setup of the room. We'll go ahead and move on to the closet. And you have been warned. I'm hoping the lighting will be okay in the closet. I don't know, but we're going to try our best. Hopefully you cannot hear the floor squeaking. It's horrible. So this is another shoe rack. I actually have shoes in here. Here I have some of my props that I take pictures with and then some more props. And this is stuff from my classroom um, that I just kind of have hanging out. So this is my disaster of a closet. It's very small. So I'm hoping I can film it okay because I really can't get in there. But on the floor, can't even walk in the closet. So these totes right here hold all the cards I've made and I sell on Etsy. So when someone buys a card off Etsy, I come in here and I sit on the floor and dig through my totes and pull the cards. I don't know what that is. Boxes. Here are some shipping supplies. This is two, like this is one right here. And then I have another one down there. So we have some bags some tissue paper, these are my shipping envelopes, some cardboard that I sometimes stick in my envelopes to um, so the envelopes don't bend. And then this stuff down here on the bottom you can't even see is like painting supplies. My husband and I used to paint, but uh, we don't have time for that anymore. So on top here is some more photo props. Up here to the right, these are empty boxes that I save because when I do my D stashes, sometimes people need boxes. So um, these as well, empty boxes. This is my little stamp collection when I was collecting postage stamps. This is some sewing stuff, some patterns, and some 
the fabric. Down here, this is my Queen & Company items. My water brush markers and my zig markers are in the back. Pattern paper and just a couple more photo boxes. Down here, another photo box, just some other odd stuff. Here are my embellishments from Queen & Company I keep in here. Kits, Prismacolor markers, another Queen & Company case for embellishments. This is two, two rows deep. Is that right? Two columns deep. So back there you see more. They are retired Stampin' Up! stamp sets that I'm not ready to part with yet that I keep here. Down below is some cardstock, printer paper, vellum. Then I have my Arteza watercolor paper, some Bristol vellum, and more watercolor paper. Here I have a reusable coffee mug. Here's some more of the Queen & Company um, foam pieces. This is supposed to be just pattern paper, but I have envelopes in there as well. This is my bin of envelopes, but also clear sleeves that I put my cards in when I um, finished making them with an envelope. Um, and then this has magic uh, Sharpies, magic markers, whatever. Sharpies at the top and then it's empty. It's just a little container. Here's some more um, Insel Bright, a sewing for my cozies. And then on the floor here, it's just a bin full of stuff. It's just a bunch of junk down there. So photo albums, some sewing books, some pattern paper, some empty cases, um, my sewing machine cover, and some boxes up there. Um, here are some clear cases that Sampin' Up! sells. This is full of embellishments from Queen & Company that I pull from. Here's some more pattern paper, six by six. Moving down, I have an empty container. This is some paper, who knows what, uh, why I bought it. There are some business cards, but then I have staples, rubber bands, and then here are the magnets I get. So this is what the magnetic vent covers look like. They're perfect. So moving on, a little iron. This is my Yeti mic, my fancy mic that is not compatible with my Mac. So I use this probably 10 times and then I got a new computer and it's not working anymore. Um, some scissors. Why do I have these? I may de-stash these. But scissors that cut, um, you know, a fancy border. Some sewing things. Down here, some more photo boxes, which are great for storage. Um, I really need to label mine because I have no idea what's in there. Um, my Fisker Stampin' Press, some more photo props in here, photos of I think my wedding and honeymoon, <laughs> and then containers, which are really great. I don't, maybe with the new setup I'll have a use for those, but they probably need to go as well. Down here I have my laminator, another photo prop, just some odds and ends, there's my sticker maker. So yeah, that's my closet. It's a big mess. I hate this closet. My husband did great building the shelves and it has helped out tremendously because I can't imagine what it would be like without the shelves but it just, the closet does not work. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the before. I showed it because I want you to see what I've improved on, what I've changed, but also because some of the stuff is okay, the way I have things set up, and you might find ideas that may help you. Um, it's not horrible the way I have it set up. The issue is I have too much. For me, everything needs a place and it needs to be next to each other. The fact that I have three areas where I hold cardstock just doesn't work for me. Also, a big issue was I do not like sitting while I work. So in all three of my areas, I am sitting. So for the after, what you'll see there'll be a table here and um, it will be counter height. So that is what I'm most excited about. And then back here will be a huge shelf. Okay guys, so here is the new setup. Again, I'm on a selfie stick, so I apologize for any shakiness. I will try to keep it as steady as possible, but forgive me in advance. So I'm standing at the door as you walk in, and as you can tell, it is a huge difference. Um, I just love it. So much to the point that I don't really wanna do anything because it's so nice and neat, and it probably will never be this nice and neat again. <laughs> So just like the before video, I will kind of start you off to the left, or I'm sorry, to the right, and then we will move our way left. So coming into the door, nothing much has really changed with this setup here. Um, I have my display board for my craft stores, whatever. That's eventually going to go into the guest room so I can open my door all the way, and that's kind of out of the way. 
But for now, that's where it sits behind the door. When the door is open, it hides it. I did move this container over. What I did with this setup is I moved this table over to the wall and then I had this um, rainbow container over here and I had moved it over here. And this uh, little thing was on the desk in between my sewing and embroidery machine and I just moved it on top. So thankfully this was able to stay in the room. I was able to make it work because it's such a huge organizer that I just love. So I'm not gonna go too much into this area because it didn't change. The lighting changed. So I moved one of my Ot lights there. Ot lights are great, but it really doesn't provide me with the light for my embroidery machine and sewing machine. So I'm gonna have to figure something out in order to get more lighting whether raising that light up or whatever. Um, hopefully the lighting is okay in here. I uh, It obviously has changed and I don't have as much lighting um, in certain areas. Anyway, so for this top shelf, I freshened it up with some different cards. And then of course I was able to keep my thread in this area, thankfully, and the cat area moved over here. Still no luck in getting them to stay in here with me. <laughs> Even though a lot of things changed, I was thankful to use a lot of what I already had. So in my before video, I had three areas. I had my desk, then a desk here, and then a desk over here. This stayed the same. I moved two of the tabletops here, and for my desk over here, I purchased a smaller tabletop to allow more room for the walkway. The biggest issue was having enough space to move around freely. If you can see from this ugly carpet, my old desk came out to here. So I was able to take it in a good eight inches to push it back so there's room for me to walk. I moved one of my carts over here and it holds pretty much the same thing. My um, supplies when I have orders on Etsy, I did put some t uh, computer paper and just some extra stuff. I do have a couple empty totes, which that is huge for me. I have quite a bit of empty storage spaces, which is awesome because I've never had that before. <laughs> Everything has been full and just ridiculously stuffed with things. So here is my desk area. These are Alex drawers and these are the Linman tabletops. I'll have everything listed below. I will list it Amazon and Ikea because Amazon does have a little bit, although it is quite pricey. Anyway, the biggest thing that I wanted was my island. So I bought the Calyx shelves. This is, I call it two by two only because it has two shelves and then two shelves across and down. That's not what it's called, but for this video, two by two. And these kind of serve as my legs. I did buy these legs right here. I don't remember what they're called, but I will have it listed below. And instead of putting the legs on these, I wanted to put the legs like this so I have storage underneath. And also that way I wouldn't have an extra tabletop that I had nothing to do with. So this has worked out really well, but these legs can go under here. There's also a caster set of the wheels that are really meant for these um, units, but either one would work. So coming over to the island, this is a Linman table, if I'm pronouncing that right. It is bigger than what is at my desk. This is a smaller one. So my island has storage underneath. Um, I'll go around to the other end if I can. I keep my trash can underneath here. And then with these, I kept these two open and then I purchased the little inserts, which we'll get into on the big unit, inserts. So I hold um, sewing supplies in these. Over here, I'm able to keep my Gemini Junior and then my cutting plates. And then coming around to this area, which is where I'll work, where I sit, I attached a couple of these to hold supplies while I'm using it. I really haven't made a car, well, I haven't made anything at all since having this set up. My husband hung the camera mounts and the lighting last night so I really haven't done much with it. Underneath I have my scoreboard, my ATG, my heat gun. This box I kept, it came in packaging and I went ahead and kept it because it was quite sturdy and I have my stamping box in there. Here I have my cutting tools which are handy and over here I have my stamping platforms and Misty. So moving on I have a cart I'm not sure if it'll stay there because this opening is smaller than I like. I hit it. I hit my little sponge right here. Every time I walk by, I don't really like that. But for now, I'm going to try to make it work because I wanted to use my carts. And I also like the fact that my Big Shot sits right here now and it's close to my work area. I have, um, I updated my dies, those little <laughs> frames I had. Eventually I would like to hang them on the wall, but for now they're going to sit there. Excuse the plug. That was hidden and now it's not hidden. I need to put a cover on it since painting. 
So on my cards, I have my Big Shot, obviously. Down here, I just have some supplies, my cardstock, some baby wipes, some tape, and down here, I'm using a photo box to hold my dies, which has worked out really well. I was concerned of where to place my dies after I set everything up. On this wall, I have my nail polish holder again with all my Nuvo stuff. Now, since I got rid of my old work area, I had two Alex drawers that I needed to do something with. The original plan was to put them somewhere else that did not pan out. So we stacked them. Now I'm really weird and nervous. I'm kind of a nervous Nelly when stacking stuff as far as weight. So I'm like, is this going to be okay? Is that too much weight on this one? But it's worked out fine. It's fine. I need to chill out. <laughs> At the top here, I have my Copics. I got rid of the storage container I had them in. Put them in these little cute buckets that I have. And then I have my blending brushes. For these cabinets, let's see if we can go through them real quick. Black and white scraps. Sorry, the lighting is kind of dark colored scraps this drawer nothing has changed it's all my adhesive it's a big old mess but it'll, it's fine for now here are my inks i was able to bring my memento inks back with my other inks that way i'll be able to use them this drawer hasn't changed much again i apologize for the lighting it's so dark there we go that is a little bit better so this is just the same thing as last time tools glues blender brushes whatever this one is fun foam specialty cardstock glitter paper embellishments um, again I don't know if this will stay this way because I get my embellishments a lot and I don't want something where I have to bend down search so for now that's where it is um, some stickers and then the bottom drawer is another sticker drawer that I showed you in the other video to the side here I have my photo props my backboard and foam boards over here I have my big paper trimmer now the biggest thing for me was this purchase and this is a calyx unit they have a five by five is what i'm calling it so they're five spaces across five spaces down they also have a four by four for lack of a better term where it's four across four down i went ahead and got the five one the five by five because i didn't want to get the four by four and regret not getting something bigger um i would always like to have extra room than having to kind of figure out what to do with the lack of room I have. So we'll just start from the top and then move down. So starting here, so if you're not familiar with Ikea, everything is customizable basically. You buy the unit, you get to pick the inserts. So I bought two doors, one to have at each corner at the top. Up here I have my water brush pens, paper towels, Prismacolors, watercolors, paint brushes, all right there. The next three, I have my paper. These little magazine holders, you can purchase some from Ikea. However, I got a pack of 12 off Amazon that I think was a better deal. Again, I will link as much as I can to what I have and you let me know if you have any questions. So this is my watercolor paper. This is some um, specialty paper, some acetate. And then the rest is just cardstock. Now, for each color of cardstock, I bought these Avriel ticket holders, which have been great. And I put a label as to, what, as to what color the cardstock is, and I'm able to keep my scraps and everything in here. I did have a question on Instagram: How many sheets will these hold? Um, I this is 110 pound cardstock, and I have you can probably fit about 20 sheets, give or take, of that here. Um, I don't stuff them too full because I don't want them to rip. I also just keep unopened cardstock in the container as well. When I come to the thing, my container, I can see easily the label if you're wondering why I put them off to the side. I thought that was the best placement for me. This next drawer just kind of holds some extra cardstock, some Nina. Then I have some extra red cardstock and my white cardstock pack from Michaels. Coming down to these, these are my stamp and storage containers. And this was a huge splurge. I mean, these alone cost half of what this whole makeover room was. So this was quite a bit of a big purchase, hence why I'm having a huge de-stash coming up <laughs> uh, to kind of recoup some of the cost. 
So I spent a few days trying to figure out what to get. I knew I wanted the second row down to have these storages. So the first one is the punch storage and it's specifically for punches, which typically, you know, the Stampin' Up punches. So this is great. My punches are originally on the floor. This has worked perfectly. The next three are the standard ink pad holders. Now they were made to hold the Stampin' Up ink pads, the old style, this style, and it works perfectly. You stick them in there, they fit. Now, Stampin' Storage also sells holders that hold the skinny. These, the Lawn Fawns Simon Says Stamp. They also make storage containers to hold the new Stampin' Up! ink pads, which look like this. And those two, the new ink pad holders and the small ink pad holders, hold more ink pads. I think 40 something. And I believe these are only 36, if I'm not mistaken. So I was struggling. I'm like, well, I have old ink pads. I have new ink pads of Stampin' Up! And I also have the skinnies. So what do I do? Another thing was this one over here is the Distress Ink Holder. <laughs> So this cube holds the Distress inks. Well, I had enough to fill one, but then I have nine left over. I didn't want to get two of these because they don't fit anything else. They're very shallow. So I knew that I couldn't, I mean, I could, but I didn't like the way it looked. They stick out. I purchased, I just decided to purchase one Distress because I knew I would fill it up. Then I got three standards, which is, this is the standard. So my um, extra Distress inks will fit in here. I just don't want to push them all the way back. I want to be careful. Now the standards fit everything that I have and that's why I went ahead and got them. Same thing with these. You don't want to push the skinny ones back because you'll have to dig for them. They do sell spacers that you can put behind it and the ink pad won't go back, but I'll be careful, it's, it's fine. So I can fit all my old Stampin' Up! ink pads in here. They fit perfectly. I have enough space for my distress inks and my skinny inks as they refer to them. And what's nice is I have room if I get any more ink pads, which honestly I really don't. I have every color I'll ever need, so this is totally fine. I'm really happy even though it's ridiculously priced. It's a good purchase because it creates an aesthetically pleasing look, but it's great storage. The next row down I got drawers. You can buy a set of two drawers at Ikea and I decided to do this whole row as drawers. Some of these drawers are empty, which is awesome, again, because I have room to grow, <laughs> which I don't really want to after going through everything and doing everything. So we'll just go through the drawers really quick. Here in this one, I have reinkers. I don't know if this is gonna stay that way because I can't see what color I need. I'll have to organize it in some way where all the Color families are together, that would be helpful. Empty, yay, empty, empty drawer. This one just has some stuff that I really didn't know what to do with. This box is just to put things in. I didn't wanna get rid of those. Same thing with this one. These are just ready for items that need to be put in a drawer. This is some ribbon, and this is just kind of hodgepodge. I have some ribbon, watercolor panels, alcohol, cardstock, uh, Love From Lizzie peel offs. This is specifically Stampin' Up. So I have my embossing powder, some glitter paste. I moved my black, white, and clear embossing powder to smaller containers. And one of my um, subscribers, I think it was Nancy, she sent me a bunch of these little spoons and I actually can use them now. So I need to attach them to my containers and that is what I'll use for my embossing. Now, although the drawers and the door is nice, those can add up quickly, the cost. So for the this row, I bought the little, can I don't wanna say canvas, cause it's not, but cloth storage containers. And you know, I worry about these because they're so deep. So you have the potential of losing a lot of space. However, they are awesome at holding a 12 by 12 paper. So here is all, not all, but a lot of my 12 by 12 paper. I need to organize it, but it's in there and it's awesome. So I believe three of these, and I do have some six by six paper pads that go with collections that are in here that I wanna keep together. But these three have 12 by 12 paper, mega packs from Lizzie, all that. So it's great storage. It turned out being really great. 
This is my shipping supplies when I do my Etsy orders. And then this one is another shipping labels, envelopes and such. This bottom row is just storage. If you remember from my closet, the cards I made were on the floor. Well, this right here and this over here are my cards. So I store my cards there in those plastic containers. They fit perfectly. It's perfect. I'm so happy they're off the floor. First, I have one of these I purchased at Michael's. I have to say I'm so excited that that's the only thing on my desk and I have all this space to work where before I had a lot of stuff crowding my desk. So down here, I just have a storage container. There's not much in there, just little odds and ends. Here I have a rack and whoop, I think I was originally going to put my cutters in there because I wasn't planning on doing this um, where I had the under storage. So I purchased that but ended up not using it for what I purchased it for. So I have my sequin container and then I have just some paper and um, my foam, just some stuff that standing up is separated and organized. These two are empty which is great. So I have room for other things in there. Here is another one of the Alex drawers, the tall one. And I put my Spectrum Noir markers on top and the things that are in here, let's see. So embossing folders, stencils, embossing paste, my washi and twine, retired Stampin' Up. I have magazines in here and I believe, yes, empty, empty. And then I have, what's in here? Oh, just some extra, extra supplies, tape dispensers, stuff that doesn't even really belong here, cosmetic bags and stuff like that. My other cart here, it's empty. I think it has an ink pad in there I need to get out, but it's empty. It's there for now. That's not an ideal place for it because I can barely open the drawers, but that's where it's gonna sit. This shoe rack, I would like to eventually move to the inside of my closet. When that happens, I'll be able to move this out and then I'll be able to open the door all the way. Um, if I move it out, the shoe rack gets in the way. So that is where it'll be for now. But um, the shoe rack, a great storage thing like I explained in the before video. I hung up my dust buster. <laughs> so it's not on the floor underneath the desk. And so since this desk is smaller, I pulled out the legs I had purchased when I originally purchased these tables. Stuck the two legs, that way I have enough room to get my legs under the desk. And then just scooted out this Alex drawer, put my printer on top, so I got rid of the filing cabinet. The closet is my most proud accomplishment. Um, you saw it before, it was a huge disaster. So here it is now, I love it so much. So again, I do have this here. I would like to eventually get rid of that, but for now it stays. So walking into the closet, you couldn't even walk into it. I do have a cart here, but I can easily easily roll it out. So I'm not worried about that being in the closet. So I actually can walk into the closet. Look at this, you can see this yucky carpet. <laughs> but I went ahead and moved my bookshelf here. So I have my bookshelf, there's my photo props, and then all my stamps because I really don't, I couldn't afford to not have my bookshelf because that's my stamp storage. So looking to the right here, I stacked my shipping boxes a lot neat, nicer, put my sewing things together and my other things together. Everything that goes together is together, which I'm so happy for. I was able to lay out all my Stampin' Up! stamps, which is nice because then I, I can actually see what I have. So down here are some Queen & Company items. I have my 6x6 pattern paper together, actual photos in a photo box. Down here I have my shipping supplies, some envelopes, paper my envelopes, my punch boards, and then this storage container. And then down here, I just have some more storage containers, all my painting supplies, acrylic paints and canvases go down there, and then some more storage. Really organized, which I'm really pleased about. It may look like a lot, but trust me, you know, you saw the before. It's, and if I could pan out as far so you could see it all. It is very nice and neat. So I'm very happy with it. So up here, I was able to empty out my 12 by 12 containers and put them in those little cloth totes on my um, display thing I purchased. I just showed you. Here are those little um, photo holders I got from scrapbook.com. I just put them in here and they fit perfectly up there. And then I have these two crates where they're organized, some books, photo albums. And here I have, oh, and here are my cards that you guys have sent me in notes and stuff that I want to keep. And then another little, another little storage thing. Here's a card holder. Wasn't sure what to do with, but it fit perfectly in there. And then I have some starch, my Gamsol, just some, uh, 
bottled stuff, some glue. Down here, some more storage items, my sticker maker, storage, odds and ends. And then I have all my foiling here, which I bought a ton. I never use it. I need to use it, get a um, couple of videos out using foiling. And then my laminator, just some extra of these storage containers because I have quite a bit, baby wipes, and then some sewing and shipping supplies and extra toner. It's just, it's perfect. I'm able to walk in the closet. Everything has its space and everything, you know, my papers are all together. My stamp and up stamps, I can all see what I have. Um, it's just nice and tidy and I'm really pleased with that. And then when I'm done in here, I can just roll in my cart and close the door. Now I'm standing back at the door. I wanted to mention the lighting. So unfortunately I had to get rid of my ceiling fan. Um, if you live in Houston or in Texas or anywhere in the South, you really don't want to get rid of your ceiling fan. But I had to because I needed to do my lighting and camera and the ceiling fan would have just whacked them right off. So I replaced it with this light. And then I purchased one of these pendant lights from Lowe's. I'll try to find it and link it. It's quite big, but I knew it would light up all of my surface. I couldn't center it to my work area because my camera mount had to be centered to my work area. But I think it's going to work out just fine. I did do a video, a catalog walkthrough on my Stampin' Up! channel, and the lighting was fine. It's going to take some getting used to. I do have more of a glare. It will be pretty comparable to what I was working with before. Here is my camera mount I purchased off Amazon. So far it seems to be working great. I just use a Nikon Coolpix point and shoot camera. Um, if you are in the market for a camera I would recommend Canon. I think I'm more partial to Canon but this happens to be a Nikon and what it does it just screws into that little thing right there. It holds it in place. This particular camera mount is for projectors. So it could take a lot of weight. So if I was to purchase a better camera, it would be able to hold it just fine. Also, so. I wanted to mention, if you do a similar setup to this, the Linman tables and the Calyx units, keep in mind that the Linman tables are more narrow than the unit. So I forgot to mention, but I wanted to. If you come over here, you have this space. So over here, I wanted it to be flush since that's what you see the most. Um, but then if you walk over here, you can see that there is this space where they don't line up. Um, that, if you're like me, little things like that kind of annoy you. Thankfully, it hasn't bothered me too much. I do wish it wasn't that way, but just know that it will not lay flush if you do want to duplicate this setup. Another thing I did for this table and even the legs is I purchased... A, um, I think it's called a shelf liner or drawer liner. It's kind of the webbed looking stuff, but it's mushy. It's kind of like foam. And I have a strip along here in between this unit and this ta um, tabletop, a strip of that um, on this side and the other side to keep it from slipping. I also cut down a little circle and taped them to the legs, the bottom, so then this doesn't slide. So this is not moving at all, which is awesome. So the table's pretty solid and my camera mount is pretty solid unless a big old thing of thunder comes and shakes the house. Hopefully I won't have any more wobbly camera. <laughs> so I think that's it. If I forgot something, let me know. I will answer all your questions. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. I am so happy that I got to share with you what my craft room looked like before and what it looks like now. I know a tour was highly requested and I just kind of avoided it because my craft room was a mess. But um, I'm very proud and thankful that I was able to update it and share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas from the before and the after. Yeah. I will link everything that I can down below if there's something specific you are looking for. Let me know in the comment section. I will get back to you as soon as I'm able. And I apologize. This video is so long and kind of unprofessional with my wobbling and all that. But um, I do thank you for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.